Kristen Brookstrat, and today we come to you from the Minnesota State Fair where my tribe, the Shakopee Midwakanton Sioux community, has the first ever tribal exhibit at the Minnesota State Fair. Today we're going to talk about why representation at the fair matters. I hope you enjoy this episode. super excited about having you at our booth today. Um, I know education is important to you and it's important to your administration, especially Indigenous education. Can you tell us a little bit about why Indigenous education is important for all of us? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm super excited to be here. This is amazing um, and just thank you for having a presence at the Great Minnesota Get Together. I think um, when we talk about Indigenous education for all, or we talk about uh, the need for Minnesotans, frankly, to know um, where they live, and the fact that uh, Dakota and Anishinaabe people have been here um, long before Minnesota was Minnesota, uh, it changes the way that we treat each other, it changes the way that we um, show up for our children and for our communities. Uh, I think for a long time, Indigenous folks have been uh, invisible. And so the presence of you know, this booth here makes a difference. Our young people learning about who they are and where they come from and whose land they live on um, is just really important. Our young people can handle the, the truth. And uh, I think that um, we're in just this moment where things are changing and we are visible and we are here and we are contemporary people. Uh, and I'm ready. As a mom of an eight-year-old, little indigenous child, like I want her to feel like her full, beautiful indigenous self whenever she walks into a school building, into her classroom. Um, and I think that's what we should want for, for all kids in the state. I couldn't agree more. I think seeing yourself reflected in your education and your curriculum and how your story fits into the larger community is so important for all our kiddos. So thank you for your work on Indigenous Education for All and just your work supporting um, all of us as, as you do what you do every single day. Well, and thank you for being here and for just telling the story of, of Indigenous people um, and for your leadership and just... Uh, I'm so excited and this brings me so much hope and I know that for other uh, indigenous folks who are going to be walking through the fair and through the education building, like this matters, us seeing ourselves reflected everywhere, in the classroom, at the fair, um, in leadership positions, like, it all matters. You've been leading and supporting tribes and girls across Minnesota um, and really the country uh, for a long time now. Why do you think it's important that people know more about tribes and tribal leadership? Everybody needs to have a all right well senator pat thanks so much for visiting our booth today we're really excited to be here at the minnesota state fair um you have the opportunity to work with our community and, and get to know other tribes across the state what's something you think minnesotans should know about tribal communities well, I think what Minnesotans ought to know is how embedded some of the tribal communities are with our other communities. You know, one of the things we appreciate about the Shakopee Midwakanton is that they are great partners throughout the community, with the county, with the cities uh, that they border. Um, when I was on the school board, you guys donated AEDs to all the schools, which was just absolutely fantastic. And I know that uh, you guys support a lot of the other uh, native communities in the, in the state and in other states. So I think your generosity is something people love. Hey, Jonathan, thanks so much for visiting our booth here at the State Fair. We're super excited to be here. Um, as a leader of the tribal leadership team, what's your Talk a little bit about the importance of supporting native businesses and other diverse businesses across the state and 
of what that means for your local companies? Well, first of all, I wouldn't miss being here today and celebrating this first of its kind exhibit state fair. Hard to believe that after over 150 years, the first time that we're here celebrating this with you. So I'm grateful for your leadership to be here. The tribal business and our native community is so critical to the broader business community of Minneapolis and Guam and across the region and the state. We look at the investment that our tribal community makes, the, the role they play in employment, in business creation, all of those things can't be underscored enough. And I think in this moment here, to lift that up and celebrate it is just you know, so pitch perfect for bringing the Minnesota State Fair back from the pandemic. Yeah, it's great to be here at the fair. You know, I think a lot of folks in Minnesota um, don't know a lot about tribes in general. And I think one of the things uh, people really don't know is that in most cases, tribes are the largest employers in their county. So they're not only employing tribal members, but they're employing non-tribal members, they're purchasing from local vendors, and, and really do make an impact across the state. So um, I always like to, to make sure you know folks understand that tribes are still here. Um, we are modern tribal governments and we operate modern businesses and really do have a kind of impact. So I know you know that and I want to thank you for all you do. Um, to yeah, 100%. It's one of the largest chambers of commerce in the state. We recognize that the, the employment opportunity, the economic competitiveness opportunity, the wealth creation and job creation opportunity, all of those things are something that we should be focused on. And as a state, we should be into it. We should go back to our roots and really yourself, not just celebrate, but create opportunities together to advance our native community, our tribal community, and do more work together. Madam Speaker, thank you so much for stopping by our booth today. We're really excited to be here at the State Fair. Um, you know, in your position, you have the opportunity to work with a lot of people, including tribal nations. And why do you think it's significant that people know more about tribes in the state of Minnesota? And how do you think, you know, this booth helps uh, educate folks? Well, it's such a significant part of Minnesota history, really. You know, the Minnesota tribal communities were here long before uh, Europeans, and, and there's so much uh, history in terms of how we ended up where we are now, and I think not everybody knows, and they should know, and, and the biggest thing people should understand is the concept of sovereignty. Yeah, sovereignty is definitely one of those things people don't understand so much, tribal sovereignty, um, and that as governments, tribes do have control over a lot of their affairs, um, and that allows us to create partnerships and work together with folks across you know, the state of Minnesota. So we appreciate you know the partnerships with the state and with, with you on getting, getting things done that benefit all Minnesotans. So, thank you. What, one thing a lot of people don't realize is the governmental systems in Minnesota's 11 tribal nations. That you have your own kind of version of the DNR and you have your own health services and there's a lot um, that we're trying to do that's really similar. You know, we do uh, international exchanges where we might talk to somebody from China or Canada who's working to solve a public health problem or an environmental problem. And we have such fabulous government to government resources right here within our own state. And I think understanding more about the, the people in our communities and the differences but also similarities is really important. And a few years ago, uh, you hosted uh, us and some other folks to educate uh, members of the House on tribal sovereignty and federal Indian policy. Um, why, why, why do you think that's significant and important for our legislators to understand? Well, I think if we're going to give the respect that's due to tribal government, we have to understand the history, and that's the Minnesota history and the U.S. history. I certainly learned a lot on soccer today, and I thought I was a little bit more well-versed than the average person, but I learned a ton. I'm really grateful that so many people were willing to invest time in educating members of the House of Representatives, because it's really, you know, it's our job to educate ourselves, but we really need help, I think, to do a good job. But that's the beginning, right? So that was one day in 2019. I think we need to keep building on that. As you have built this relationship with the SMSG, um, what do you think 
is one of the most important things people should know about working with Chinese government? I think the most important thing is understanding what sovereignty is. Um, because indeed, uh, the U.S. Constitution um, identifies sovereignty. Uh, so, um, and what that means is how we work together is something that for me was, was quite a learning. Um, but it is, it is a learning that once accomplished, quite honestly, and we understand how we can partner or live together. Um, some great things can be unlocked. Folks come to the state fair today. Why should they stop by the Shakopee Midwalk community? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is um, understanding Native Minnesota. Um, you know, I uh, went to school and, and I read history uh, as it was thought to be or as it was shared with me. And here at the booth, what we're going to see is, uh, quite honestly, there are 11 Native American tribes right here in Minnesota. And understanding the diversity uh, of those tribes, but also the history. And so one of the things that when you do come to the booth, there is an invitation to come visit Coach Kyle T and visit the exhibit. Um, and that's a, an exhibit that I've had the opportunity of visiting a few times. And I pick up something new every time, and I would say, Come to the booth, learn um, about the wonderful diversity of uh, the Native American culture in our state, in our continent. But then, a little bit deeper, come to Shakopee and visit the state. Hello everyone, we are at Hochokadati, uh, the Cultural Center and Public Exhibit here at SMSC, and I have joining me Vice Chairman Cole Miller uh, to talk a little bit about our experience being the first tribal nation to host a booth at the Minnesota State Fair. Um, how did you think it went, Vice Chairman uh, Miller? It went great. Uh, good time. It was, it was unbelievable to meet so many people from around the state that had no idea that we existed, that we were right here. We're in a fully operational tribal government right here in Shakopee, metro area. Yeah, we got really uh, great reception, right? Most of the people I talked to were really excited we were there, and, and did you feel the same way? I, I, I really did, and um, I, you've hit on it a few times, um, talking about how we're the first tribal government represented at the state fair in 2021. A little late, but uh, happy to happy to start that. Yeah, and so we uh, wanted to share our booth with everybody who wasn't able to come to the State Fair. So we're here at Hochokadati. Uh, right behind us is the booth set up here in our cultural center. Um, why do you think people should come visit us out here? Well, um, first of all, we've got this beautiful booth set up. Um, lots of information about not only the Shakopee, Medawak, and Sioux community, but the other uh, 10 tribes in Minnesota as well. Um, but also we've got our public exhibit over here, and uh, it's just a beautiful building, beautiful story, and uh, I encourage everybody to check it out. Yeah, I agree. It's a really amazing exhibit. So yeah, if you didn't get a chance, come down and check it out. And those of us that did visit the State Fair um, and got a booklet, there's a free admission in the back of that booklet. So come visit us. Um, what do you hope people take away from their experience, whether it's the State Fair or Hochokata tea? <clears throat> well, with the State Fair, um, you know, from now on, when you think of the great Minnesota get together, you're going to think Pronto Pups, Sweet Martha's and Tribal Sovereignty. Nice. That's <laughs> awesome. Yep. I love that. Uh, I think with that, thank you so much for being here and, and coming on the podcast. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah. uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me for the Native Minnesota podcast. For more episodes, please subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can also visit our website, understandnativemn.org, to learn more about our campaign's work to improve the Native narrative in Minnesota's public schools.